what's up everybody today's video is on lessons from shakuni he is one of the biggest culprits externally in the mahabharat although he's not the biggest we will see who is the biggest culprit okay no no you are not thinking the right person i am not talking of duryodhana here there is a bigger culprit than shakuni and duryodhana also yes everybody knows him but people still ignore him okay but he will be very soon exposed okay there you go if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and if you want a consultation then please approach me to my website and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will help you find out who is the biggest culprit <laughs> okay so who is shakuni shakuni is the brother of gandhari gandhari is the wife of dhritarashtra who was blind by birth and then he was also the uncle as in hindi we say mama mama of the kurus the 100 sons of dhritarashtra headed by duryodhan then dushasan then vikarn yes all of these great personalities and he was the one who was heading them yes he means shakuni here so duryodhana and dushasana and vikarna all these hundred brothers they always used to very faithfully loyally with lot of devotion they used to listen to what their uncle mama shakuni would say yes we all know that so now what happened was bhishma pitama had gone to gandhar to ask the hand of gandhari <laughs> for the tarashtra because those days there was no love marriage there was only arranged marriage and then what happened when malat subal heard of this he was bit apprehensive because the tarashtra was blind by birth and no father would ever want that his daughter marry somebody who is blind yes but he left the ultimate decision to gandhari because it was her choice her life her decision and then the moment gandhari heard that bhishma pitama has come all the way from hastinapur towards gandhar then when she heard that he has come with the proposal of the eldest of the kurus dhritarashtra who is somehow blind by nature then gandhari being a very well cultivated and a chaste lady she said what's the problem why can't i marry a blind man <laughs> just because he's blind doesn't mean that uh, he is not a good person yes she was a extraordinary lady and these days sometimes i get girls and ladies telling me that oh this proposal has come to me but i have rejected it because the boy is not handsome or the boy is not earning a million euros <laughs> okay so gandhari is waiting to teach some lessons to us but today's topic is not on gandhari today's topic is on chakuni but it's very important to understand the story of gandhari and uh, her marriage with dhritarashtra because without that you will not understand where the problem started regarding chakuni so now what happened is gandhari thought okay if my husband cannot see if that is the problem because of which you all are thinking that i am superior to him because i am able to see right and he can't see because he is blind so then i will also not see from tomorrow why tomorrow even from this very moment she took a cloth and she wrapped it around her eyes and she said from tomorrow i also cannot see even in fact from today now itself i will not see so now i am at the equal position with my husband he is blind and i can't see <laughs> so that is the greatness of gandhari that she uh, chose to take a equal position yes with her husband and she said that if my husband does not see this world then i will also not see the beautiful things of this world in fact i will not see this world at all okay now gandhari did not have any problem should i repeat she was very happy in fact she voluntarily took this decision yes 
But then this Shakuni was there, her brother. Shakuni, he was the prince of Gandhar means he was supposed to rule after Maharaj Subal would pass away, the king, the that contemporary king of Gandhar. And he thought, this is a very big injustice to my sister. Why has why in the universe has this person Rishma come to ask the hand of my beautiful sister for this blind person? How disgusting it is. Look, look how beautiful she is. Beautiful not externally, internally also, because Gandhari was she was so good that her goodness was famous in the entire wor three worlds. And she was extremely beautiful also. So Sakuni thought, what a misfortune that has come unto my sister that she has to live with a person who is blind. She has to live with somebody who can never see her and appreciate her of how beautiful she is. Yes. So then Sakuni thought, I will revenge this from Bhishma. And then from that very day, he started his enmity with Bhishma Pitama, of course. And he thought this was a very big injustice. And he, he said to Bhishma that, why have you come to ask the hand of Gandhari for Dhritarashtra? Why not for Dhritarashtra's brother? Yes, who was Dhritarashtra's brother? Pandu, the father of the Pandavas. Because he can see. <laughs> so he will be able to see my sister also. Yes. So now there is a very important lesson here. Sometimes things happen in our life and we don't need to give a response to it. Yes. Which means when Gandhari was supposed to get married, she voluntarily accepted. She said that, okay, if my husband can't see, I will also not see. Then why in the universe are you taking offense for that? <laughs> see, that's so foolish, right? Who is supposed to get married? That person has no problem. The girl is telling, okay, I will marry. But why in the universe are you taking this self, what, what they call it, self aggrandizement, chest thumping. Oh, there was injustice to my sister, chest thumping. Why in the universe are you doing that? It's not required, okay? So sometimes, some things may happen to our near and dear ones. And see, there's this same lesson which is there in the Ramayana also. This Surpanakha went to this Ravan and said, Oh, they have done this to your sister. Yes, because Lakshmana had ripped off her nose and that nose fell in a place which is known as Nasik today in India. So then Ravana also took offense. Yes, 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 it's my sister. No? It has happened to my sister. So see, so the thing here is Shakuni took offense for something which he should have not taken. Which means, okay, that is a bit unfortunate that Gandhari had to marry Dhritarashtra, but ultimately it's her choice. So if she has no problem, who the hell are you to say that there is an injustice? Ha, if she would have been forced into the marriage, then that would have been a very big injustice. But it was not like that. In fact, it was way, way beyond that. Way far ahead from being forced. Gandhari voluntarily said, I will marry Dhritarashtra. I have no problem. But then this fellow, he did not stop. He took a vow that day. <laughs> that from tomorrow, I will not, I will, I will revenge this. Yes. And then what happened? After that, when Dhritarashtra was not, uh, sitting in the throne, Pandu was coined as the emperor because a king should have no deficiency in his body, right? So then, although Dhritarashtra was the eldest, but Pandu being the younger one, because he, he was more bodily uh, equipped and fit than Dhritarashtra, his elder brother, but Pandu was put in the throne. And then, from that time, Shakuni started thinking, I could not put my brother-in-law what they say in Hindi na? Jija <laughs> I could not put my Jija into the throne but I will ensure that his son sits in the throne 
बाई हुक और बाई क्रुक बाई एनी मीन्स एज इन संस्कृत जैसे ना साम दाम दंड भेद बाई एनी मीन्स बैक बोरो स्टील यू किल समी वॉट एवर यू वॉन्ट यू डू इट आई विल मेक श्योर दैट माई सिस्टर सन सिट्स इन द थ्रोन नाउ देन अनफॉर्चुनेटली वॉट हैपेंड गांधार इज प्रेगनेंसी वेंट फॉर अ वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम एंड देन युधिष्ठिर महाराज हु वॉज द सन ऑफ पांडू एंड कुंती ही वॉज बॉर्न अर्लियर दैन दुर्योधना हु वॉज द सन ऑफ धृतराष्ट्र एंड गांधारी and because of that he was eligible to sit in the throne and of course because he was the most eligible candidate we all know about yudhishthir maharaj the mahabharat exclusively coins him as dharmaraj nobody else in the mahabharat now this means that yudhishthir was destined to sit there because he was the eldest because he was the most qualified and because he was the son of the king yes because pandu was the king and dhritarashtra was rule acting as a uh, in charge as a representative of the king until yudhishthir matures and until he sits in the throne but shakuni could not digest this so he tried to uh, hatch evil schemes after one other the other what he did he was the most instrumental person in all the evil schemes which the kauravas had hatched in fact he was the leader see duryodhana this dushasan and karna these three were also there but they were simply followers they were not the leaders <laughs> they were executing they were implementing what shakuni said yes and then ultimately what shakuni did he thought he thought let us wipe out all the pandavas one by one and then what he did when they were uh, very small the pandavas and the kauravas so then Shakuni started inflicting poison in the heads of the kurus which was not required because when duryodhana and the uh, kauravas they were small shakuni started telling them see these five pandavas they are your enemies they are not your cousins don't treat them like your brothers they are your biggest enemies the only aim of your life is to kill them yes is to destroy them till the time you cannot destroy them you should not sit in peace by hook or by crook back bore or steel <laughs> so your sole goal and aim and purpose and definition of your life has to be how can i destroy these five pandavas yes so into the innocent minds of this small kids like duryodhana dushasana he started planting all this poison from day 1 he started doing that and then as a result of that the envy of the kurus started going it started growing day by day moment by moment against the pandavas they started hating them for no reason because the pandavas are most cultured they are most loved they are most respected because they are most respectful and they are most obedient and they are most humble <laughs> so that is why they were uh, very good and very cultured they were very much loved by everybody and they could have been even loved by their cousins the kurus and that would have happened if they would have uh, if shakuni would have not poisoned them from the childhood because as a child you don't have those indications that those poisonous inclinations a child doesn't have it unless somebody puts those things into their heads so then shakuni he ensured that the hatred of the kurus towards the pandavas is maintained from their childhood and in the video of duryodhana which is there above this in the playlist i have discussed how duryodhana had tried to uh, give poison to bhima and then how he came out more stronger than him then ever yes and then they start, decided to kill them in varnavrat in that lakshagra and then what happened they also stayed there somehow they escaped from there and then they went and married dropadi and then a powerful king like drupad came on their side so there you see shakuni all efforts in vain <laughs> all the controversies and scandals and schemes that you hatch everything backfires 
so the lesson which shakuni is trying to teach us is there are many lessons <laughs> the most important lesson is that let us not try to create enmity between people yes so when we are in our workplace then also there can be a shakuni or many shakunis like this who are just talking oh he did this she did that you said this he said that i said this okay and then this this politics going on so we should avoid people who are doing politics in our family or even in the workplace especially in our workplace because there are so many people and even within family some relatives yes oh your mother said this your father said this your uncle said this they are trying to behave like shakuni there because mahabharat is ultimately the story of a family right so in our family also we have to identify who are like the shakunis <laughs> because in kal in dwapar yuga there was only one shakuni but in kali yuga everybody is like a shakuni yes politics playing games trying to get things done okay that's not diplomacy diplomacy is different diplomacy is used by a king so that he can uh, efficiently run the kingdom that is that has nothing to do with what shakuni did yes because the lesson we learn is whatever shakuni did whatever he tried to do by wrong means to kill the pandavas none of them materialized the only thing he got till the end is suffering yes he suffered suffered and suffered and shakuni wants to tell us something very important if we behave like him the thing that we will lose at the earliest is our mental peace yes shakuni was the most miserable person in the entire story of the mahabharat why because he was never peaceful mentally the only thing he had was mental disturbance because he always had this i want to kill the pandavas i want to kill them kill them kill them kill them kill them kill them my god so when we harbor evil thoughts inside us for somebody else always remember they will backfire on to us only so sometimes people tell me that oh i have run into this scandal they are talking this about me they are talking that about me maybe in some lifetime we also did the same to somebody else right that is why that is happening that is why we see that some people and on the other hand we may see that some people they are acting like shakunis but nothing bad is happening to them yes but they will also face the karma very soon maybe in this life or in some other or in some other lifetime and shakuni took the sole responsibility for poisoning the innocent minds of the kurus yes just imagine if you would have not done it then the 100 kauravas and the five pandavas they would become one my god even the king of the heavens indra would have not been able to fight them who can fight the army where there is arjuna there is bhima there is duryodhan there is dushasan there is vikarn there is bhishma there is drona who can fight this army nobody if all of them were in one side yes and they would have ruled the entire earth yudhishthira maharaj would have been the king that would be the most prosperous kingdom to have ever lived under the guidance of vidura and bhishma and drona but shakuni did not let this happen he hatched schemes after schemes after schemes one after the other and till the end he tried his best but because of one personality all his efforts went in vain <laughs> because this personality was ensuring directly or indirectly that whatever he does does not materialize so let me see if you know who is that personality you can write it in the comments yes let me see who is watching this video till the end it's 19 minutes of course all right so let us not be like shakuni yes shakuni is very important because he will teach us who not to be like and at the same time let us identify the shakunis around us and be careful of them yes because sometimes to deal with shakunis we also have to behave like a shakuni <laughs> so let's be very careful in dealing with these people who try to behave like shakuni did and try to kill um, create animosity na vengeance revenge my god all those poisonous traits and who do backbiting because a person who is gossiping with you about somebody else 
will gossip about you to somebody else right should i repeat a person who gossips with you about somebody else will gossip about you with somebody else suppose i have a friend who comes and tells me oh she did this he did this the next moment what he will do he will go and tell about you oh he did this she did this <laughs> so if we behave like shakunis we will also encounter other shakunis yes so what to do if there are so many shakunis around us pray to lord krishna <laughs> because he was the only one who saved the pandavas if lord krishna would not be there that's it the pandavas would have been wiped out entirely by shakuni long back of course vidura was also there but that was indirectly lord krishna's protection only when he ensured that shakuni all his efforts are baffled all right so that is it from my side lessons from shakuni there are many lessons we will keep learning as we go through this and it is very important that we be good because if we are learning the gita we are seeing videos we are reading the gita and then we behave like shakuni then lord krishna will not be there on our side okay so it is very important that we learn the lessons which shakuni wants us to teach and then only we can appreciate the message of the gita because gita can only be learned by those people who are pure in their heart pure doesn't mean you are a perfected enlightened being yes it doesn't mean that pure means you do not harbor malice in your heart against somebody it can be there but you don't actively engage in that which means suppose you don't like a person you hate a person that's okay but you should not go on pulling that person down or killing him or her <laughs> that's not good so if you are doing that then we cannot understand what's there in the gita because our mind will be disturbed always yes so we will not have mental peace so in that case none of the messages which lord krishna is trying to teach us will sink into our heads okay all right that is it from my side lessons from shakuni if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website below and if you like this video click the thumbs up and if you want me to make any other video then please let me know okay until next time with another video <laughs> on some other character okay wish you good night bye bye see you